Hi everybody, it's new guitar day in the studio and for me it's kind of return to where this all started. So there's a bit of a story behind this guitar. This is modeled on the very first guitar that I ever totally built by hand, and that's actually this guitar here, though it was much more like this one when it was originally built. I've kind of messed around with it a little bit over the last few years. This one got really badly damaged when I moved house last time and um, the neck got broken out of the body and I took the opportunity to mod it with lots of switches and things, put the Brian May system in it because it already had three trisonics. Didn't start out like that. That guitar was built um, to help promote an album, strange enough. Uh, the album I had out at the time, I'd used a lot of guitars in the studio and I wanted something really versatile to take out on the road and without taking all those guitars with me. I mean, I had a Telecaster in the studio, two Les Pauls, uh, a 60s Strat. It was ridiculous how many guitars I used on that record. So when it came to designing a guitar for myself, I designed it with the three trisonics because I thought it would have a, a huge range of different tones. And it did, and it was fantastic. It worked very well for a while. The only problem was, of course, I got about two years into promoting this record. We were just at the start, actually, of the process of making the next one. And I had an accident in the workshop because this was the guitar that started Tony Edwards' guitars. That was the first guitar that I totally built by hand. Up until that point, I'd really been a uh, repairer, restorer, refurbisher. And, of course, I was building bolt togethers and doing custom jobs for people, but I was not cutting wood that much by hand. And I had an accident with the planer, and I lost the tips of these two fingers, which of course created a massive problem for the band. And in the end, uh, another six or 12 months further down the road, the entire thing petered out because I just totally lost confidence in my playing. A few other things had gone on as well. Um, and then that was maybe 2012, 2013. And in reality, apart from a short stint playing lead in a covers band, it was a short stint, about a year, I actually haven't played lead guitar or been the lead guitar player in a band for a decade nearly. to go back to playing a bit more guitar this year I decided it was time to build myself another guitar and I really wanted the one that this should have been I think had I just built it to how I wanted it right at the beginning with some of the things that I know now so the guitar itself just like the last one it's a chambered mahogany body with a maple cap the maple cap's not particularly thick it's only about six mil um, it's more aesthetic than anything else, but it makes it easier to get into the inside of the guitar, of course, when you're building it. So it's chambered out through here. Very similar sort of chambering in there. It's actually hollow much further into here than the scratch plate itself. The next glued in, as with most of my guitars, um, it's a 24 fret ebony fingerboard. This time, unusually, it's on a laminated neck, but that was actually just because I had the laminates uh, knocking around in the workshop and I just wanted to use them up. Because um, actually your audience never sees that, do they really? I mean, it's, it looks very nice when it's laying up against a bench or something. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter. It does make the neck nice and stiff though, because of all those glue joints and the fact that the wood's turned in opposite directions every time. And of course that helps with stability and the volute helps with strength. And of course, I don't use a very deep headstock angle either. That's about 10 degrees. It's got the same locking tuners on, strange enough, from the same company um, as on the original one, and they've never let me down, so I just got another set of them. Um, the one thing I have done differently with this is I've strung it through the body. Now, that's not a tone issue. It's actually simply because I really 
just like the simplicity of this particular design of string stay and I've been using them for a little while now with some of the designs I've been making so I thought I'd use one on this. I just think it's very very tidy look. The biggest issue I had with this guitar was choosing pickups for it. I went through the same process I do with customers. You get the guitar, we try some pickups out. I had real trouble getting the pickups right for this one. Um, really surprised myself that I ended up going back to exactly where I would have started had I not been trying to be too clever about it, which is basically some Alnico 2 PAF style pickups. And realistically, truth is, it's a kind of Les Paul killer. And it was always designed to be a bit of a Les Paul killer. It's, it's about the same weight as a late 50s Les Paul. The neck shape is very similar to a late 50s Les Paul, maybe just a little bigger and maybe just a touch wider at the nut um, because I like a little bit of width down there. And it's really designed to make big old fat Les Paul tones. The reason I've gone for a very simple layout here is because I sing and I just find that messing around with lots of controls while I'm singing uh, it, it's just a distraction, so I try to keep the control panel very, very simple for guitars that I'm going to use when I'm singing. And if you've seen my uh, Les Paul shaped thing, the, the sparkly one, it's exactly the same layout. In fact, although this has coil taps which is fitted, um, that's for these pickups that I was messing around with when I had three conductor pickups. I actually got rid of the three conductor pickups. I didn't really like the split coils either. Um, so I just went straight back to basic PAS. And there you have it. It's about eight, eight and a half pounds, I suppose. Uh, maybe even lighter. Um, it's very, very comfortable. And the access up here, I find fantastic because I can get to 22 without even really getting my thumb onto the heel at all. Anyway, the new Mark 1. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>